क्वेश्चन ओवर हेयर इज इन अचुरेटेड सोल्यूशन ऑफ द स्पेरिंगली सोल्यूबल सोल्यूबल स्ट्रॉन्ग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट बेसिकली इन अचुरेटेड सोल्यूशन ऑफ द स्पेरिंगली सोल्यूबल स्ट्रॉन्ग इलेक्ट्रोलाइट ए जी आई ओ थ्री ए जी आई ओ थ्री हुज मॉलिकुलर मास इज टू एटी थ्री ओके द इक्म विथ सेट्स इन इज AgIO3 is in solid state is in equilibrium with Ag positive in the aqueous state plus IO3 negative in aqueous state okay it's 283 grams per mole fine if the solubility product ksp of agio3 at a given temperature is 1 into 10 raised to power minus 8 what is the mass of agio3 contained in 100 ml of its saturated solution okay i'll say it's a good question and a easy question to solve for basically we are over here given with the dissociation equation of agio3 at equilibrium agio3 is in equilibrium with ag positive and io3 negative okay okay fine now if i just assume that at time t equals to 0 when the dissociation has not yet been started if i just talk about the concentration basically in terms of the solubility thing i'll say it's 1 for agio3 and 0 and 0 for ag positive and io3 negative but when time t equals to equilibrium t equilibrium let us suppose that s be the solubility for agio3 let for agio3 solubility be s okay solubility be s let s b the solubility of agio3 and if it is so then at equilibrium some amount must have been soluble some of the amount of agio3 must have been soluble okay and that i have just taken it taken as s and that particular amount would have been formed for ag positive as well as for iodate ion io3 negative okay so at equilibrium if i just talk about the concentration in terms of solubility it will be 1 minus s for ag io3 for ag positive it will be s and for io3 negative it will be s okay now talking about solubility product which is actually equals to the product of ag positive ion multiplied by the product of io3 negative ion okay and the values for it has been given to us not given to us we have actually calculated out it is actually s so for ag positive it is s as well as for iodate ion it is also s so s into s is equals to s square moreover in the question only we are given with the value of solubility product of ag io3 at a given temperature which is 1 into 10 raised to power minus 8 okay so it's 1 into 10 raised to power minus 8 so it's s square equals to 10 raised to power minus 8 then s it becomes equals to 10 raised to power minus 4 this is the value of s the solubility of agio3 we have calculated out that to at equilibrium okay so now we want to calculate out the mass of agio3 the mass of agio3 contained in 100 ml of its saturated solution so mass of agio3 is equals to concentration term it's the concentration term multiplied by the molar mass concentration term multiplied by the molar mass multiplied by the volume and volume should be in liters what is the concentration term value it's 10 raised to power minus 4 which is moles per liter talking about the molar mass it's 283 gram per mole talking about the volume which is 100 ml so it's 100 divided by 1000 liters okay so now this liter cancels with this liter moles cancel with this mole we are only left with the gram thing so it comes out to be two zeros cancel with these two zeros again we are left out with so it will be 0.00283 grams so it will become it will become 2.83 into 10 raised to power minus 3 grams 2.83 into 10 raised to power minus 3 grams so i'll mark option number b as the right answer to this question 
क्वेश्चन ओवर हेयर इज आई पैक नेम ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कंपाउंड इज आई पैक नेम ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कंपाउंड इज वॉट so basically this is the compound given to us and what i'm seeing that the functional group present in this particular compound is amide functional group amide functional group amide functional group basically okay fine now we have to name this compound the suffix used for the amide functional group will be amide or you can say carboxamide carboxamide when we use the suffix carboxamide when we when do we use the suffix carboxamide in the case when the amide group the amide functional group is not included in the parent chain when the functional group when the amide functional group is not included in the parent chain then we use the suffix carboxamide and when it's been included in the parent chain the carbon atom of the amide group when it's been actually included in the parent chain or when the amide group is included in the parent chain then we use the suffix amide over here this amide functional group is actually in the chain if i just select the chain basically it's one carbon atom two carbon atom three four and five carbon atom chain in which the amide functional group is actually been included so in the parent chain amide functional group has been included so the suffix will be amide only now to this nitrogen atom two groups are attached one is methyl and the other one is ethyl we'll start actually naming the compound from the substituents attached at the nitrogen atom we'll start the naming of this compound from the substituents attached at the nitrogen atom and then we'll talk about the parent for parent carbon chain okay so it will be n okay it now which particular alkyl substituent will be named first the substituent which comes first in alphabetical order will be named first it is methyl substituent attached at nitrogen and it's the ethyl substituent which is also attached at nitrogen e comes first in alphabetical order so it will be n dash ethyl n ethyl okay then it will be n methyl n ethyl n methyl five carbon atom parent chain so it will be pentanamide it will be pentanamide n ethyl n methyl pentanamide are you getting my point or not see look again i'll explain it first of all we'll be selecting the parent chain but before that i actually look for the functional group which is amide that functional group is actually present in the carbon chain the main carbon parent chain selecting the main parent carbon chain including the carbon of the amide group it is 1 2 3 four and five five carbon atom parent chain to the nitrogen atom of the amide group two alkyl substituents are attached so first of all we'll be naming the substituents attached to the nitrogen atom it will be n ethyl why because e comes first in alphabetical order that's why so it's n ethyl n methyl pentanamide the iupac name of the following compound so basically it's n ethyl n methyl pentanamide hence option number c is the right answer for this particular question question over here is which of the following is not a reducing agent not a reducing agent means it will be an oxidizing agent an oxidizing agent okay good cool so over here sodium nitrite nano2 hydrogen and essential to stannous chloride basically these three a b and d they themselves get oxidized and act as a reducing agent so a b and d they act as reducing agent they act as reducing agent sodium nitrate nano3 it act as an oxidizing agent it does have oxidizing property it act as oxidizing agent now you will say ma'am has straight away said that a b and d they are reducing agent and c is oxidizing agent how come she has determined it or analyzed it without doing anything 
please just don't go with the cramming thing just understood one thing we will be calculating out the oxidation state okay now for sodium nitrate NaNO3 if I just calculate out the oxidation state of nitrogen over here so it's plus 1 for sodium plus x let x be the oxidation state of nitrogen for oxygen the oxidation state is minus 2 it's 3 oxygen atoms so it's minus 6 overall the charge is 0 so x is equals to plus 5 so in NaNO3 the oxidation state of nitrogen is plus 5 plus 5 if I talk about NaNO2 now it will be plus 1 plus x minus 4 equals to 0 so x is equals to plus 3 over here it's in plus 3 oxidation state hydrogen over here is in 0 oxidation state if I just talk about SN over here the oxidation state of SN will be x minus 2 equals to 0 because the oxidation number for chlorine is minus 1 2 chlorine atoms so minus 2 so x is equals to plus 2 over here it I mean to say SN will be in plus 2 oxidation state. Now more is the value of oxidation state. More is the value of oxidation state. Now this nitrogen in NaNO3 is in highest oxidation state plus 5. Okay. It will not further get oxidized. It will not get further oxidized. It, instead of it, it will get reduced now. Over here NaNO3 nitrogen is having plus 3 oxidation state it has a scope to lose the electron it has a scope to lose the electrons when nitrogen is in plus 3 oxidation state okay are you getting my point or not okay but over here if i just talk about nitrogen being in plus 5 oxidation state it will not further get oxidized instead of it it will get reduced now Okay, hence it is having the oxidizing property. It will oxidize the other species and itself get reduced. Behaving as an oxidizing agent, that means not a reducing agent. Okay, so basically more is the oxidation state of a particular atom or highest is the oxidation state of a particular atom basically. More will be, it will be behaving as an oxidizing agent. That means it will be in a state to get reduced to have an electron. Okay, because over here deficiency is very, very much. Nitrogen in plus 5 oxidation state, that means the electrons, it's actually deficient in electrons. Okay, so it will now require electrons. Fine, hence it will get reduced, not get oxidized. Behaving as an oxidizing agent, option number C is the right answer to this question. Question over here is, for the following gaseous equilibrium, N2O4 in the gaseous state is in equilibrium with twice of N2 in the gaseous state. Kp is found to be equal to Kc. Equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure is equals to equilibrium constant in terms of concentration. This is attained at which particular temperature because only the options given to us are the temperature values. So basically, we know the relationship between Kp and Kc. Kp is equals to Kc. RT raised to power RT raised to power delta Ng, wherein delta Ng is the difference in the number of moles of the product and the reactant, number of gaseous moles of the product and the reactant. So, delta Ng will be total number of gaseous moles of the product minus total number of gaseous moles of the reactant. So, it will be 2 minus 1, which is equals to 1. So, Kp, therefore, Kp is equals to Kc into Rt. Okay. So, T temperature is equals to Kp by Kc into 1 by R over here. Fine. Now, it is found that Kp is equals to Kc. Kp is equals to Kc. Okay. Which means this cancels out. So, it is 1 upon R. Let's actually over here we are talking about the partial pressure also because Kp is equilibrium constant in terms of partial pressure. So, for that particular thing, I am only saying that I am going to take the value of universal gas constant in liter atmosphere term. So, it will be 1 upon 0 0.0821 basically. So, when you will solve this out, just take the approximation 1 upon 0 0.08 only and go ahead with it. So, if it becomes 1 upon 0 0.08, I am just taking the approximation. So, it will be 100 
divided by 8. 100 divided by 8. Okay. And if I go with it, so it will be 8 ones are 8. Okay. Then 2 and 0. 8 twos are 16. Okay. So 20 minus 16 is 4 basically. Okay. Then point. Fine. And then 0. Then 8 fives are 40. So it will be 12.5 Kelvin. So I actually took the approximation. That's why I got the answer as 12.5 Kelvin. But the answer similar to it is 12.18 Kelvin. When we'll be taking or actually taking the actual value 0 0.0821. So option number D we can mark as the right answer to this question because it is actually similar to the value we calculated out for. So option number D is the right answer to this question. Question over here is the kinetic energy of n molecules of oxygen. The kinetic energy of n molecules of oxygen is x joules at minus 123 degree Celsius. Another sample of oxygen, another sample of oxygen at 27 degree Celsius has a kinetic energy of 2x. The latter sample contains how many molecules of oxygen? Latter sample means the sample of oxygen at 27 degree Celsius, which is having the kinetic energy of 2x. So, the latter sample contains molecules of oxygen. How much? Okay. So, kinetic energy basically is equals to the energy possessed by the total number of moles of gaseous molecules, which is equals to 3 by 2 n r t. n is the number of moles basically. Now, According to the question which is given to us, the kinetic energy of n molecules of oxygen is x joules. So, for the first case, x is equals to 3 by 2. Now, this n is equals to number of molecules divided by Na Avogadro number. So, it is n divided by Na. What is the value of R? Let us keep it like this only. And the value of T temperature, it is minus 123 degree Celsius, which is equals to 150 Kelvin. So, it is 150 Kelvin, the first expression. Talking about the another sample whose kinetic energy is 2x. So, it is 2x basically equals to 3 by 2. Now, we want to calculate the number of oxygen molecules. We want to calculate the latter sample contains dash molecules of O2, dash, dash molecules of oxygen, number of oxygen molecules. Okay. So, let it be n dash. Let it be n dash. So, the sample contains n dash molecules of O2. n dash molecules of O2 basically. So, it will be n dash upon Na multiplied by R multiplied by T temperature which is 150 Kelvin. It is the second expression. If I just divide, it is 1 divided by 2. So, it will be x upon 2x, okay, which is equals to 3 by 2 n upon n a multiplied by r multiplied by 150 divided by over here it's 27 degree celsius so wait a minute i did a mistake it will not be 150 so it's 273 and 27 so basically it becomes 300 kelvin so it's 300 over here okay so it will be 3 by 2 n dash upon n a multiplied by R, multiplied by T temperature 300. Now, this 3 by 2 cancels with this 3 by 2. Na cancels with this Na. X cancels with this X. R cancels with this 150 ones are 150, twos are 300. So, it's 1 upon 2, which is equals to N upon N dash into 2. So, this 2 cancels with this 2. So, N is equals to N dash basically n is equals to n dash. So, the latter sample contains n molecules of oxygen. The latter sample contains n molecules of oxygen. Over here, initially we were having n molecules of oxygen. So, the latter sample also contains n molecules of oxygen. Hence, option number A is the right answer to this question.